a transportation problem. Say we have a certain product, for example a fabric, which is being manufactured at certain locations and these locations are called sources. And then the same product, the fabric, needs to be made available at certain other locations which are called destinations. So we have the sources and the destinations and then the fabric needs to be actually transported from the sources to the destinations so that the requirement at destinations can be fulfilled. So the problems coming in this category are known as the transportation problems or the shipping problem. So now let's try to connect it with optimization that what is there in this kind of problems which needs to be optimized. For example, we can minimize the cost of transportation. We can also minimize the time of transportation, the time it takes to transport goods from sources to destinations and in certain examples we can also minimize the distance traveled. But remember our focus is to work on single objective problems. We cannot have more than one objective to be satisfied at the same time. Therefore, we have to select one of these. So usually it is the minimization of the cost of transportation or minimization of the time of transportation and in certain examples it can also be the maximization of efficiency. And now let's look at what kind of data will be given to us in these problems. Suppose we have M sources and N destinations and the sources are denoted by SIs, I is equal to 1 to M and then each source is having certain amount of available material. So this is known as the supply available at each source and this is denoted by AIs. And then the destinations are denoted by DJ. D stands for the destination and J is a running index goes from 1 to N. And then each destination is having an associated demand with it that this many number of units are required at that particular destination. So the demands are denoted by BJs. And then we need to transport the goods from source to destination. So there is a cost of transportation involved. So the notation is CIJs. So we have M into N C uh, costs given to us. And then we need to represent this data in a particular form. So this is the most appropriate form which is being used to represent the transportation problems. I have taken the very simple example M equals to 4 and N equals to 5. So let's see what these entries of uh, tables are and what these rows and columns denoting. So each row is actually denoting a respective source and each column is actually denoting the destination. So S1, S2, S3, S4 are the sources, D1, D2, D3, D4, D5 are the destinations. And then in front of each row, I will be writing the availabilities or the supplies which are available at the sources A1, A2, A3, A4 and then below each column we will be writing the demands of the respective destinations denoted by B1, B2, B3, B4, B5. So they are the supplies and demands and they will be given to me in the question. So this kind of problems are also known as supply demand problems. And then the cost of transportation is also given to me from each source to each destination denoted by C11, C12, C13 and so on. In general the notation is CIJ and there is a particular place where we need to write these CIJs. So this is the upper right corner, draw a square and there you write the CIJs. So this is a representation. Now let's try to connect it with the linear programming formulation that what will be the LPP formulation of this problem. So define the decision variables as let xij denote the number of units which needs to be transported from each source to each destination and then because cij's are the cost of transportation per unit. So when you multiply cij's with xij's the number of units it become the total cost and you have to actually the minimize it. So minimize z equals to this summation becomes our objective function. So if you talk about the constraint parts, so each source is having its constraint that it cannot supply what is being more available, what is available there and each demand, each destination is having a demand constraint that it, its minimum demand needs to be fulfilled. So the source constraints are less than equal to, these are the supply constraints and the demand constraints are greater than equal to, these are the destination constraints. And then finally, we have the non-negativity restrictions with us 
which makes sure that these variables x, y, j cannot be negative. It's obvious because they are denoting the number of units of something, so they cannot be negative. So this completes the LPP formulation of transportation problem. So in the next video, we'll try to understand what, how to solve this.